Here we have a helium balloon that is rising. It starts with some initial volume, initial temperature, and initial pressure, but as it rises, it drops to a new temperature and a new pressure, and we have to find the new volume. So we're thinking about the equation PV equals nRT, because that is the one that relates pressure, volume, and temperature. What about number of moles, though? Well, this balloon has to be tied off. So if you have, I don't know, 20 moles inside, then after it has risen, it will still be 20 moles. N is constant. And here's why that is important. We can isolate N to get PV over RT. So the initial P times the initial volume over R and the initial temperature is equal to N, but it's the same N the whole time. So the final values also yield the exact same N. And if we now take the N out altogether, we have an equation that we can solve. Oops, let's do this, put this back. Because after all, we know the initial pressure. That value is the 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 pascals. We have the initial volume, 0.25 meters cubed. R is in our data booklet. And the initial temperature is not 30 because that's Celsius. The initial temperature will be 273 plus 30. And we also know the final pressure. That's this value here. We know R again, although the R is canceled, don't they? We know the final temperature, negative 10, but we have to add 273. So we can go find the final volume. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to solve that out. Uh, I'll leave that as an exercise for you if you'd like. But I do want to point out there are two assumptions we're making. First, they don't tell us that N is constant. We're assuming N is constant. And it's probably true, but, you know, maybe conceivably some of the gas leaks out. We're assuming that doesn't happen, but maybe a little bit could leak out. But what's the assumption? We're assuming gas doesn't leak out. Another assumption. We used the ideal gas law. But nothing in the real world is actually an ideal gas. So we're assuming that the gas, the helium, behaves like an ideal gas. Okay. Once we have uh, the answer to part A, to find the number of moles, we simply plug in the initial pressure, initial volume, initial temperature, or you could plug in the final pressure, final volume, final temperature. It's up to you. So there is something of a trick. A lot of the time, one of these values will be constant. And when it is, you can set up this ratio. If N is constant, then PV over RT and it's some first pressure, first volume, first uh, temperature is equal to a second pressure, second volume, second temperature, right? If we have P constant, what would our ratio be? Isolate P, we would get nRT over volume equals nRT over volume because they both yield the same pressure. Even if you have the first condition on the left and the second state on the right. If volume is constant, and sometimes it'll be something like, you know, maybe they say temperature over volume is constant. In that case, we would need temperature over volume to be the thing we isolate. So temperature, so I move volume over, these go to the other side, and I have P over NR, 
equals P over NR. Oops. Like this. And this is what I would actually use to solve. So there are uh, tricks like this. Look for cons uh, values that don't change and think about what sorts of you know proportions we could set up to solve the question.